There's no place where women are treated as wonderfully as Rosie's. It's just an atmosphere here at Rosie's that's different from all the other places I've been involved with. It's, it's a positive, warm, loving atmosphere. Poor and homeless women, it's an interesting and different population that most of us, certainly most of us that are on boards, don't even actually experience working with and really understanding the population. We're really helping people who need our help and we do it in a way that is beneficial to them. When they walk in the door, they're greeted in a really dignified and wonderful way. We don't force our services on them. We um, meet them where um, they're ready to be met emotionally and help them uh, where they need help. When I started volunteering, I think everybody kind of starts in the, in the kitchen and serving lunch or serving dinner. Well, I started as a lunch volunteer on Mondays. For the first uh, six or eight months was just serving in the, in the dining room, usually every other Saturday. As I continued to volunteer in the dining hall and um, do food drives and other things for Rosie's, I just felt um, I want to do something more. I want to learn more about Rosie's. I want to do anything I can. So I thought being on the board was a natural transition for me. I think that having a board of volunteers um, really helps understand the mission of Rosie's Place and you always have someone on the board that knows one of the various services of Rosie's Place fairly in depth and that comes in handy. They're tutors, they're dining room volunteers, they're in the arts program and so forth. We get to know the women from different perspectives and we see what needs they have and I think that it's helpful for a board to understand what the needs of the guests that we're serving. I think with most organizations you'd run the danger of um, the, the, uh, the board members you know, drifting away from the mission or forgetting why they're there, sort of getting wrapped up in the business of running a nonprofit. And I don't think that's ever going to be the case with us because of that volunteer requirement and more importantly commitment. One of the problems with having an all-volunteer board is you do not get a board full of major donors. You might have some major donors on your board but you have to work a little harder to get volunteers who are major donors. We have a tremendous program as a board. Um, I, I think all of, all of us have a commitment to contacting seven to ten um, major donors every year and basically you know, thanking them, soliciting them to the point of our level of our comfort for, for funds, additional funds. I being ambassadors to the people we know, the organizations we work in, um, that helps draw the right people into the organization as well. Um, and then, you know, supporting the fundraisers. And then finally, you know, we have gone, you know, we've, we've added a layer here by having a board of advisors. There are people who have more connections in the business area in Boston and can participate more in, in major fundraisers. So we, that's a way of including them without of actually being on the governing aspect of Rosie's. The beauty of our board uh, in, 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 a, in toto is the, the, the investment that we all have in this organization. And the investment is not just in we bring cash to the table, but that we actually bring our bodies and souls to the table and you know, we know the people we, we're here, we're here. And that has value that you, know, you can't put on a balance sheet.